what's up everybody it's me erica and this is your bell collective review episode two what is it called wigs and waffles honey the girls were very busy on this episode i took so many notes so we're going to get right into it go ahead and like subscribe and comment and let the diva know you stopped by shout out to everyone who watched that little behind the scenes video that i made last night that's just your girl honey that is just your girl but anyways thank you guys for watching that i thought it was funny i was like should i post this because i really that's what i was just doing is exactly what i was doing and what you saw so i hope that brightened up some of your days and um you guys had a good time with that you know sometimes you got to see the silly part of people and you know i act silly i act crazy that's just me that's really just me but anyways let's get into the video so we start off with latrice and baby they show her house i love her house it is really nice they showed her closet big nice closet her bedroom she's in there picking out clothes for something and um, she's talking to her publicist melanie and we're meeting melanie she's on the facetime with her and she's talking about getting this hairline together and really talking about how she's built her company on her own and that it's her baby and cliff comes in while she's talking to melanie and he gives melanie a compliment and she gets off the phone real quick she gets off the phone real quick and she's like don't be giving nobody compliments he was like does that bother you no it doesn't well then what's the problem what's the problem don't be je don't be jealous latrice you don't have no reason to be jealous obviously it can y'all can't be two jealous people in a relationship child i really hope that that doesn't get on your nerves really i hope not but I mean, maybe she was just playing with him so in the scene she is basically asking him or talking about how she wants him to invest and how when she first started her company that she didn't have any real support from him it wasn't very supportive she did it all on her own and she really wants everybody to know i did this all on my own now i'm gonna be honest with you i really thought like oh this is somebody this man is older than her he has you know given her the money to start her business i prejudged you latrice i thought your man gave you the money child shout out to latrice she let the she let everybody know i did this on my own this is my baby you're not gonna tarnish my name and we could see why it's so important to her cliff says that if i give you the money you gotta listen to me no we're not gonna start none of that we're not doing that we are not doing that she was like we are not doing that and so um I need to feel like an equal. You can't just be telling me what to do just because you think you've given me some money and you're going to run this business. I've started on my own. I did it on my own. Now, whether you want to invest or not, if you think by investing, you're going to tell me what to do, that's not going to happen. You could be a silent investor. Shut your mouth and give me, and write the check. And that's all we need. And that's what at the end of the day, she says she has some reservations about allowing him to invest because he's probably going to start acting like He's the damn boss. We're not doing that. So shout out to Latrice for setting the clear boundary that this is not what we gonna do <laughs> at all. So Tambra Cherie and Leticia are meeting up and they're talking about, uh, basically she gives her a recap of brunch, talking about how the girls were acting a fool. Tambra is with me over some hair. Is that what they were really acting a fool about? This episode, I was like, okay, I like Tambra. I see her part in this cast. I could see where she definitely, there needs to be somebody with her personality. She says, um, basically Letitia was telling her about what happened at, and apparently we didn't see half of what happened. And I, kn I know that we didn't, but they said they was really acting up and she was telling her, I'll buy all your hair, I'll buy your hair out. So Marie was really acting a fool at the thing and apparently so was uh, Latrice. And she says, I don't understand why y'all act like your grandmas didn't raise y'all. <laughs> I know that's right. Y'all better act like you got some sense. Basically like we need to be a better example. You cannot be at a women's empowerment brunch acting a fool over some hair. That's, that's the part, over some hair. So. Tambra wants to know, well, did you get a chance to tell them about Ferris Street? And she was like, no, I didn't even get to tell them about that. And so she goes, okay, well, tell me, tell me about it. So she's saying that she has some meetings with some people. This woman named Dorothy, I believe her name is. Um, yeah, Miss Dorothy, she is going, she's kind of like the middle person or the liaison between, you know, the community of Ferris Street and then, 
you know, people who want to come in and kind of buy up some stuff. So she's very excited. And then Tamara was like, well, speaking of positive energy, I'm going to have my birthday party. And now that you tell me these girls was acting a fool over some hair at the damn brunch, should I be concerned? <laughs> Letitia said, I'll do my best to make sure everything stays cool. Girl, you was the main one. It could have went left, if, if but you did you did good. So we're going to get back to that. So here comes uh, Marie Bo Peep, and she's catching up with Essie. And she tells us and shares with us that she has, and she's taking care of her four children, her son's three children, and his three, the three different women that he also has had babies with. Isn't he 21 years old? What the hell? I guess we're going to get into that story next week. So she says she just basically br breaks down and gives in to her grandchildren when it's time to help them. She gives Essie a recap of the brunch and lets her know how it went left. But then she says and makes these statements that Letitia, I'm sorry, Latrice attacked her image. I'm the customer. I wasn't a businesswoman that day. To me, I felt like that day is the day you should have been a businesswoman because that day, like I said in my last review, that was the day where owners were showing up, not customers. And maybe if you tried the businesswoman approach instead of the irrational customer, then maybe you would have had a different outcome, Miss Marie. I really want to like Marie. Marie gave me my life when she walked into that motherfucking party, bitch. I said, come on, bitch. I got my entire life with her outfit on and her hair. She looks so cute. I was like, girl, I really want to like you. But Miss Marie Bo Peep, you really working me thin because, well, we're going to keep going. How would you feel, Marie, if somebody came into a business atmosphere and told you how poorly one of your centers or your health care centers did for somebody's loved one in in a public platform like that how would you feel like there's no way that you thought that what you did was in order with the order of things and the, what was the theme of the day there's no way and she says i would break her why why do you want to break her why do you why do you want to break latrice over what reason it it better be deeper than hair that's all I got to say. It better be deeper than hell. Hair, <laughs> deeper than hell. It better be deeper than hell too. I have something for her, she says. So get ready. I'm going to get her all the way together. Don't you ever insult me. But you can insult her and her business in an environment with new potential, maybe a potential network of other women. That, But you can do that. So there are rules that other people have to abide by when it comes to Marie, that she herself doesn't have to abide. And I think that might be what overflows into what's going on with her son. But we'll get back to that. Don't come for me. Girl, you came for her. Like everything about what you had said in sitting at your desk with everybody seeing the bottom of your shoes, you sat at that desk and you did not take accountability for what you did. If you didn't approach the girl in that way, you wouldn't have received that response. That Just in the last scene, she's explaining to us how this is her baby and she built this from the ground up. So anybody attacking her business, you damn right. She might come back crazy at your ass and it might go left because what are you doing amongst a bunch of women professionals being the irate customer girl? And I love when they went to that, when Tambor's party and what Antoinette said, but we're going to get back to that. So Letitia walks, was walking down the street with Miss Dorothy on Ferris Street. And she's asking her, what do you want to do over here? I want to revitalize the area. My grandfather told me about this area and how so many African-Americans, it was a hub for African-Americans and where everybody was handling their business. So it's very much a personal mission for me to revitalize this area. And I want to bring other women in to do that. I think what she's doing is absolutely great. And it's honorable because if you yourself have the means 
and within your own community see that there is a need, that is where you need to put the money. Because what will happen is some white people will come in and change the entire scene if the people in that neighborhood don't do something about it. Because the people get their money and they leave and they don't look back. And then they then they get upset and uh, when they go back to visit and it doesn't look like where they came from because it's white people walking the kids with strollers down the street and shit like that and people running and jogging and shit. And you're like, what happened to my neighborhood? Well, you left and you didn't put no money back into the hood. So I'm here for what Letitia is doing. I absolutely, I think it's, honorable i really do and i'm here for all of it and she said it means a lot to her as they were walking down the street she was like you know this is we're gonna do this and miss dorothy says it's ours claim that claim it and i hope that these women can come together and really like Letitia said the little girls walk down the street and be like she did it she did it i can do it kudos applause insert applause here honey I'm here for it and I support it. I, I think it's great. We need to, and we do need to see more of this on reality show, whatever, whatever show on television, there needs to be representation to show that there are people who are giving back to their communities and want to revitalize their communities. Shout out to Letitia and her efforts. If anything else, honey, Latrice goes over to Antoinette's house, honey. Antoinette is enjoying her wine. She has her little home outfit on with her heels, honey, and she's drinking her wine. She answers the door. Honey, you cannot tell me. I wrote right here. She's enjoying her freedom. <laughs> All that shit that you did down at that baseball field, girl. We get it, but we see that you're really enjoying yourself. So when she walked to the door, my son said, is that Candace? <laughs> so Latrice says she's since she's coming to see um Antoinette's newly decorated home she's gonna bring her some samples of her hair care line they start talking about the brunch they were like girl what happened and she was like girl Marie is so delusional there's no talking to her so I really wish that we could see other pieces of what happened at that brunch the way that Letitia described it to Tambra and the way that they're talking about it just seems like it was it was a lot Maybe they don't, maybe they're trying to spare you guys because maybe y'all just went a little too left. Latrice says that I, anybody who tarnishes my brand, I don't have any, I don't want to have any words for you. I'm not going to argue. I'm going to let my money speak for itself. I don't have time to argue with nobody. Antoinette makes this comment in her confessional about these women, they can do all of these things, but I believe that there's a lack of emotional maturity in some of the women and we know she's talking about Marie and I think the lack of emotional maturity is what we are going to witness next week and how that lack of emotional maturity probably overflowed into the way that she parents henceforth the product that she's getting and receiving back to her we'll see I'm just going off of human behavior she says there's plenty of food at the table everybody can eat and that's real because I don't like the way that Marie said I would break her I don't like it I don't like that at all I don't think that it's cool at all anyway so Antoinette shares with us that as she was cleaning up her home and changing the environment to kind of you know make it her own after a divorce that she found a lot of his old stuff some baseball stuff and her and Antoinette were talking uh, Antoinette and uh, Latrice were talking about how they used to really be a power couple and that people looking on couldn't really tell all of the things that they were dealing with and so I love that Latrice said you know I'm here I'm your friend we can explore these feelings together it's very um, beneficial for somebody to have a support group or girlfriends or, gr or guy friends or whomever, somebody to talk to when they're going through things like that to help them get, you know, process their emotions. Sometimes you just need somebody to sit there and listen. You don't need anybody to fix it. You just need somebody to sit there and to witness, to be a witness and to acknowledge your feelings for you. I really like that she said that. But she said basically the breakdown in their marriage was that she wanted to build her career before having children and he wanted to have children she didn't mean, mention the biracial thing in this scene she mentioned it in the other scene 
But she said, I wanted to keep my name. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to keep your professional name separate from your married name. Maybe that was a, like, maybe that was an argument about that. Like, are you going to be Dr. whatever his last name? Or are you going to be Dr. whatever her last name is? I don't know if that's the thing. If it's something that's to me is real super petty and seem like very controlling. So hopefully we get a little bit more into what happened with this guy. We just know he's, he doesn't want his face on the screen. And she says, I wasn't w willing to do that. And that's good for her because some people will compromise. And there's a lot of women who have compromised their careers to appease um, a man and to appease their husband in a marriage and then later look back and regretted it. So that's good for her that she made the choice, although it is probably a hard decision to do um, to actually say, I don't want to be connected to you because if I am, it's going to hinder goals I have for myself that you clearly are not in support of. So you got to go. I love it. She says, I figured life without him would be better. And she seems like, like was, was, when she got down on that baseball field and started doing all that, well, am I nothing? Girl, you had that whole house redecorated. You in there with your heels in your house drinking wine. You're okay. <laughs> You're fucking okay. I'm sure she has her moments, but for the most part, Antoinette seems like she knows that she made the right decision. Tambra's sitting down with her stylist. They're at this um, place figuring out outfits for her birthday. Tambra has this hat on. Tambra is giving me Carly Red. I want to see what's going on with her family dynamic because she's saying that her family is pressuring her at 40 years old to have a family. And she wants another one who wants to make sure that her career is laid, the foundation is laid so that her children will have a cool, easy life. And that's the same thing Antoinette said. So she does explain that she has frozen her eggs. And then she starts talking about this NBA basketball player wanted me to have a baby. <laughs> I said, come on, Tambra. And she's explaining that we were not in a relationship. Is she giving you Tanya, Sam? Like, girl, relax. We get it. And it's very much, but we. I like Tambra. I like Tambra. I, like I said earlier, I could see why she's on this show. She's very much needed. So she explains. She didn't. I mean, whoever this guy was, she wouldn't say who it was, but apparently they were not in a relationship and that she didn't want to compromise her morals and values for a million dollars just to have a baby. So shout out to Tamra, for, Tamra, I can't call her Tamra, uh, for making that choice. Antoinette and her friend Kaylon, they meet with Champagne at the baseball field and they got a box of things. I thought it was funny that when Antoinette mentions the issue of having biracial children that Kaylon was like, why? <laughs> what do you mean? Why girl, you in Mississippi? What the hell are you talking about? Like, how could you not understand that? Anyways, I was like, okay, she doesn't get it. She was like, so I feel like my children would have to choose between being black and being white. Um, she says, I've never experienced so much racism than when I lived here and she gets out in the field um, Kaylon asked her on the baseball. I love the little exercise that they were doing. I feel like I'm just going to say, I feel like Miss Antoinette was putting on a show for any onlookers, maybe the ex-husband to see like, oh my God, I can't live without you. I'm so disoriented. Am I going to be nothing without him? Honey, as I traipse through my house with my wine and my heels click clacking through the floor to meet my girlfriend at the door. Girl, come on. I was like, okay, we get it. Let's go through the process. Let's hit the ball out of the park. Let's run around together. It's really good to have friends who will support you and to help you get over things like that. So we're good. I was like, girl, okay, Antoinette. So anyways, they get to the birthday dinner. Letitia says she wants to bring Marie with everybody, bring Marie and all the girls together to squash everything. So, you know, Antoinette and Latrice and daddy show up and they come in talking about they late, but never ugly, honey. I said, come through. And you know, Latrice said, you know, me and me and daddy, we walk through, we like J and B. What an age difference. Cause I mean, she do take, she do take Jay-Z everywhere she go. <laughs> I 
this old ass. She do take him everywhere she go and the people can't stand it. Honey, the stands, the beehive, they cannot stand anywhere. If they could cut Jay-Z out of a picture with Beyonce, they will do their best to Photoshop his ass out. I think the people want daddy to be photoshopped out of the picture too. So he walks up and she introduces him as daddy. And I'm like, okay, so if you're introducing your husband as daddy, we know his name is Cliff. How do I call him? What do I call him if you introduce him as daddy? Can I call him daddy too? That's why you don't, call, you don't do stuff like that in public. Like we got another Monique on our hands. That's so cringy to me. I guess it's okay. Cause everybody looking like, okay, Hey daddy. <laughs> hey daddy. But, um, girl, how am I supposed to, what am I supposed to call him? If you introduce him as daddy, let me know. They're sitting down having a conversation and they start talking about the brunch and they start talking about how Tambra wasn't there and Tambra really can carry a brunch. We needed Tambra to be at that brunch based on just her energy. It seems like she just is like coming through, like, listen, we got to be positive. It's positive vibes. It's good vibes all the time. And she probably really could have carried that brunch to a different level. And that was the first time Letitia had hosted her own brunch. She said she's normally behind the scene. We could tell, talk about doing these affirmations, girl. We could tell that was your first time. Latrice says she brings up her concerns about what happened at the brunch. And she starts talking about how, you know, Marie's level of professionalism was not demonstrated at this brunch. And Latrice goes, we've never heard of her. And then Antoine, Antoinette said, well, what does, what does Marie do? And so Letitia was like, oh, you know, they're not really socialized. They do mostly like, they just stack their cash, they travel, they get their money and they travel and they're on their way. And she was like, she said, so she's a professional, basically, just not at brunch. And so I said, come on, Antoinette, bitch. She said, so that's her level of professionalism, just not at brunch. And Letitia was like, well, what we're not going to do is we're not going to talk bad about, she was like, oh no, it was just a follow-up question. Cause I'm trying to figure out if this woman is a millionaire who travels and does all these things and she knows how to be professional. Was it just not at this brunch? Is that what we're asking? We're trying to figure out what was up? What's up? Cause what does she do for her to behave like this? This is Antoinette. I said, Antoinette was looking like, okay, no, it was just a follow-up question. I love that she asked her that. So daddy, he jumps in talking about, oh, you guys are acting like heckling hens. Watch him, go back and watch it when he said it and look at Kaylon's face. She was looking like, okay, cringy old man telling these women what to do. Marie and her funky ass attitude coming to the party, baby. I said, come on. Bitch, she had that damn onesie on. She looks so damn fine. I said, Come on, Marie, bitch. I really want to like you, girl. I really want to like you because she stepped through that party, honey. I said, Come through. I loved every minute of it. But your attitude, mm -mm. she didn't have nothing to say to Latrice. Everybody's hugging. She's not saying nothing, right? But remember, let me get my notes because I don't want to forget what you had said before when you were sitting across with your feet propped up on the damn desk talking all that shit to Essie, right? I want, unless not, I, I have my notes here cause I don't want to forget. All right. So Marie says, I'm not going to go sit. I'm not going to go sit with Latrice. And she's like, okay. So they sitting down mingling or whatever. Letitia comes over to Marie. She goes, let's talk. We, how are we going to figure out how we're going to talk to Latrice? And she's like, you know, we're, we're bosses. We're both, you guys are both bosses. Let's get to her. She's not a boss. See, I, this is, this is where, this is where you lose me. Why do you feel like you need to put somebody down? Like I said, it has to be deeper than hair. It better be deeper than hair. She better, Latrice better be the ex-girlfriend of your husband or somebody like that for you to be so adamant and so cat it's like it's not even catty it's like hate hater it's like a hater it's like why are you feel like she's not a boss i will break her all of these different things come on marie you got to do better than that you got to do better than that she's not a boss and she's like well we need to figure out the way to move forward and i wrote put down with a question mark like why do you have to put her down i don't get it if you bought some hair if it's that if it's you bought some hair and from the time you left uh, goddess lengths by the time you left them took your hair to somebody else 
And when you got your hair back, it wasn't what you left Goddess Lang's with. That's not Goddess Lang's fault. And for you to come up to that girl in that way, in that hostile way, not even like, girl, I know we both business owners, but as a customer, this is what my experience was. No, you were very hostile towards her. And then you're going to get mad and say the girl insulted you and disrespected your image. You were trying to tarnish her brand, something that she's built on her own from the ground up. How could you not as a woman business owner understand why she wouldn't be protective over her fucking brand, Marie? Girl, you're going to have to do better. Anyway, Miss Tambra rolls up with a motorcade of four cars. I don't understand why the street was empty. We didn't have anybody on the outside bringing her in. But baby, I love the way that she walked in. She said, whose birthday is it? I said, come on, Tambra. That energy, that is why she is there. Great casting. She needs to be there. She needs to kind of be that girl like, listen, we it has to be good vibes all the time any of this foolishness y'all got going on we about we having a good time we are the best of mississippi let's get it like let's have this good time and let's not be disrespectful to one another let's not try to bring each other down or tarnish each other like antoinette said it's enough food at the table bitch, and they print money every day every single day so there's enough money to go around for you not to be so hateful and vindictive towards this woman's brand i just don't get it they're having a good time they are taking pics um uh leticia not leticia latrice i'm gonna get them to mix up i'm gonna figure out how, what i'm gonna do but that she's introducing to everybody to melanie her pr melanie's fine as hell too fine as hell tall she had that long ass ponytail her outfit titty sitting i was like come on girl Come on with all these fine ass women at this party. Anyway, so Melanie, she makes her way. She messy girl. She makes her way over to uh, um, to the table where Latrice and not Latrice, where Letitia and M Marie Bo Peep are sitting. So she was like, what's up? What's going on? So what happened? I heard about what happened at the brunch. What happened? OK, Miss. I have something for her. So get ready. I'm going to get her all the way together. Don't come for me. Um, I don't think today was an appropriate day to be talking. This is Tambra's day. Girl, what happened? What happened? What happened? Girl, what happened, sis? Big bad Marie? What happened, girl? I was like, look at Marie. Bo peep, peep. You didn't make a peep. What? The, what the hell? You had you was big and bad with your red bottoms on, but now you sitting there looking fly as hell, acting like the tough ass villain. Like your friend got you together later. She got your ass together with love. She really did. So they said, "Girl, we'll circle back. Don't worry about it." He said, "I just don't want to have another incident of what happened at the brunch." Well, the if the approach is different. Maybe the outcome will be different. And what it looked to me is that they were extending an olive branch. That's what Letitia was saying to you. I don't do that fake shit because they tried to do a toast after and she was just like, mm. but if they were tr trying to come in as even as the business owner trying to come back to the customer and say, hey, let's talk about and see what happened, what went wrong. And now you sitting up there with your damn jaws clenched. Big bad Marie, girl. Letitia tells Marie, listen, because they walk away. I love you and I respect your emotions, but you are building a legacy. And if somebody tells you they want to have a conversation, you say, let me hear what you have to say. But you can't be sitting here like the big macho villain. Basically, like you wasn't a part of this and wasn't didn't start this shit. You cannot do that. You're better than that. I said, come on, bitch. She let her know. And you got to know who you are. If somebody wants to go low, you got to know who you are. Now, let's turn up. I said, yes. Shot. Letitia, I love you. I, this, that's my girl. She wants to rebuild her community, and she's keeping her friends honest. I'm all for it. All for it. All fucking for it. So Letitia and Antoinette, 
you know, they sitting down and saying, um, you know, I know I talk trash. So we are missing something because we know that in the Porsche, she talked about the little wings and the dry waffles. So that somehow got a uh, seem to have gotten back to Letitia. So Letitia and Antoinette, they're sitting down having a conversation and she's like, you know, I feel like I'm catching a little shade from you, but you know, I did talk trash about her brunch. So I might have to take accountability for that. And I love the way Antoinette said, just because I don't like your event doesn't mean that it wasn't a good event. And in that, I do want to help you. I, I, I feel like your brunch can, um, is there some room for improvement? And I want to help. I love it. I love it. She's like, I want to help. So I don't know if she's going to ask, she's going to take her up on that, but, um, she ends up pulling her wig and lets her know, girl, don't worry about it. I don't have to tell you about, <laughs> bitch, she pulled her wig. I screamed just like Antoinette did like, girl, no, you did not pull her wig. So she's like, so they, they get their shit together and straighten out their problems. And after they sit there, Tambra does a toast and she just basically reminds them of who they are and what their mission is and that how they need to stick together and empower each other all for it. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think of this Bell Collective uh, review and recap and we'll get down in the comments and talk about it. Take care of each other and protect your energy. Peace.